Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on learning more about our Emergence Avatar system. In this video, we will be going over what is the Emergence Avatar system, some use case examples of why you may want to implement our EAS system, and we will also walk you through the process of how to get the EAS contract set up for your NFT or your collection. What is the EAS? EAS stands for Emergence Avatar System, and it's a software and a set of standards that provide the necessary tools for developers to import playable 3D humanoid characters into their games. The technology leverages the existing decentralized technologies and its assets to provide utility to them in 3D virtual environments. Avatars are a mapping between NFTs and 3D rigged characters metadata, using NFTs as a layer of authentication. The motivation behind this is allowing the interoperability between different virtual spaces, giving gamers or users the possibility to navigate the 3D virtual space with their preferred identity. This software is a module of our SDK, which will be distributed as a plugin made available for Unreal Engine and Unity. The documentation can be found at docs.openmetadao.com. Here you will find more information about this plugin and the rest of our tools. You can also find the step-by-step -step on how to use the Emergence Avatar system under this section. You can also find the link in the description below. The architecture consists of four main parts. Smart contract, which is deployed on Ethereum and on Polygon as of now. Then we have the file storage system, which we recommend using IPFS or RWIF. This is where you will store your avatar standard metadata file, which is basically a JSON file and your 3D object files. Then we have our cloud infrastructure, which has an API, a database, and an indexer, which is in charge of reading from the smart contracts and storing all of this information in our database in order to avoid latency and to perform a lot of operations per second for reading. Finally, we have the Unreal and the Unity plugin, which is in charge of the animations and user controls, the bones retargeting, and the avatar switcher, which is a user interface offered by us. Okay, now let's dive a little bit into the smart contracts. Smart contract is deployed on Polygon right now. We will deploy to Ethereum soon, to Ethereum mainnet, and we are also planning to expand to different networks. On the inside, the smart contract basically works like a mapper between NFTs and avatars metadata. The authentication method for editing this relationship is through the own level interface in case you are the collection owner, and if not, it's through the owner of method if you are the NFT owner. So it will check for this. And if you are the collection owner, then you will be able to edit its primary URI and its base URI. The base URI, it's made for configuring entire collections with a single write method. So when querying for a specific token, the result of a primary URI looks like the base URI that you entered slash the token ID that you're requesting for. Then if you are the NFT owner, you would be editing the secondary URI. This is useful because it allows for both the NFT collection owners or the NFT owners to edit. I'm going to show you two ways of getting an avatar. In the first example, I'm going to show it in the case that you have an NFT and you have your own 3D model and want to create your own avatar. And in the second example, I'm going to do a demonstration using our sample project to mint one of our free NFTs that already has a registered avatar. What if you want to have your own avatar? For this, there are two requirements. You should have a 3D file in the format of BRM. That's the file type that we support as of now. And you should also have your avatar metadata file. This metadata file is a standard that is developed by us, and it's basically a JSON file that looks as following. We have a GUIT, which you can generate using any global unique identifier generator online. We have the name and creator, which are going to be picked by the avatar interface to display information about the avatar. We have the type, which as of now, we only support BRM, but we have plans to support more file types in the future. We have the URI base. This is where we are going to download your 3D file from. 
And finally, the max total size and max total vertices, which are useful for the game engine. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create our own JSON file for registering an avatar for ourselves. For this example, I'm going to be using an avatar that I created with the awesome B Void Studio, which you can download for free in their webpage. So starting with the global unique identifier, you can create one yourself using any UIP generator online. I've already created mine. Now we can edit the name and creator, which will be picked by our avatar picker. Um, so let's give a name to my avatar. I'm going to call it um, some cool name. Let's think. Uh, what about um, Lady Sue? And the creator is going to be me. It's a BRM file. And now we need to upload our BRM file to IPFS. Uh, we're going to do this using Pinata. Pinata is a service that allows you to pin your files to IPFS. You can find more information about IPFS on our documentation. And uh, it has a free tier, so you can upload up to 10 gigabytes of files. So let's go ahead and upload our BRM file created with Heroid Studio. Okay, and now that our file is uploaded, we can copy this CID right here. Uh, go back to the JSON file and we're going to override this. It's super important to keep this prefix. Max total size and max total vertices are fine. So now let's save this file and we are also going to upload it to IPFS. Let's name it your avatar 2. That JSON. Okay. So now we can go ahead and register our avatar. Cool. So we uploaded our metadata and our 3D file to Pinata. But now we need an NFT to append this metadata to it. I'm not going to dive a lot into it because there's a special video dedicated to blockchain stuff. But I basically created an ERC-1155 smart contract. I deployed it to the Polygon network using the Hardhat framework. And I appended the NFT metadata to it, which is the ERC-1721 metadata standard. So marketplaces like OpenSea and even wallets like Metamask can read our NFT information to display its picture and its name. All right. So now that we have our files uploaded, we can go ahead and register an avatar for it. For this example, I deployed a smart contract on the Polygon network. So I'm going to be the collection owner of this, co of this collection. And as you can see, I have already uploaded the metadata for this NFT. So let's get the contract address and token ID. These are the two pieces of information that we're going to need for now. The contract address can be found here. If you go to OpenSea. Now, let's go ahead and open the EAS smart contract on the Polygon network. This is where we're going to write to register our avatar. Be sure to be connected with the same wallet as the one that you own the NFT with. So we're going to paste the contract address here. In this case, I'm the owner of token ID zero. So I'm going to use this one. And finally, I'm going to use the avatar URI. This one is the metadata file 
that we uploaded to IPFS. Remember that JSON file? So let me look for it. This is the metadata of my character. So let's go back to the contract and add the prefix. This piece is super important. Let's write. Again, given that I'm the collection owner, I'm going to be editing its primary URI. Now let's wait for a few seconds. All right, uh, that's basically it. Now that our transaction is confirmed, we should wait for a few minutes until our Ethereum indexer picks up this newly registered avatar, and we should be able to see it on the avatar picker. We log in with the same account. All right, so now let me show you using our sample project how we can pick this avatar. So first I'm going to connect my wallet using MetaMask on my mobile phone. I'm going to sign the message. And now I should be able to replace my avatar. And here it is, Lady 2. Sometimes this image may take a while to load because it's being downloaded from IPFS. Let's replace it, save changes. That's it. And again, here it takes some time to load the avatar as you saw there in the console. Um, this is because the 3D model is also being downloaded from IPFS and this is a pretty heavy file. So this might take up to 20 seconds. So let me pause the video and come back to you in a few seconds. Awesome. Now our avatar has been loaded and it's ready to play across different game modes. You name it. Maybe it's a fashion world. Maybe it's a music experience. Maybe even a first person shooter. The possibilities are endless. So I hope that your creativity takes us to new grounds. All right, now let's proceed to our second example. In this case, I'm going to be minting one of our free NFTs that already has a registered avatar. By the way, this is our sample project. We are aware that not everyone may have a game ready avatar. So we made this example so you can mint one for free. So let's go ahead and connect our wallets. As you can see, I'm going to use MetaMask on my mobile phone. Scan the QR code, let's press connect. Let's sign this message that's used as an authentication token. Let's minimize this and let's go to mint our NFT. It's very important that you are connected to the Polygon mainnet, as you can see here, because the contract is deployed on Polygon. If you don't know how to do this, you can refer to our documentation in the link below. So let's go ahead and interact with this console. And now I receive this notification on my wallet to confirm the transaction. We can go ahead and confirm it. I'm going to reject it in this case because I already have an NFT for myself. After a few minutes, once the Ethereum indexer has picked up this newly minted NFT, we should be able to see it on the avatar switcher. So let's go ahead and edit this persona. We can replace the avatar. And our NFT with an avatar should load up here. And this is it. And the image sometimes takes a while to load because it's being downloaded from IPFS. Here it is, now it's loaded. So let's replace the avatar, save changes, and that should be it. Now, it will take some seconds to load the avatar into the game because we are actually downloading the 3D files from the internet. So after some seconds, my avatars should switch. Okay, great. Uh, now our avatar has been loaded in, so we can play around with it. By the way, we're going to be offering a model different from this one for our um, example. As of now, we have this one that it's a CCO license, but we will be creating our new avatar that belongs to Emergence, which will be called the architect. So that's it. I think that it's also worth mentioning that we are going to be creating a user interface for you to manage and create, edit your avatars. It's going to be a web page. So that will make things much easier. So you don't have to come over Polygon Scan and upload 
yourself through Pinata, you should be able to do it entirely on our web, which should be coming soon.